In 1892, the American Association came to an end and the St. Louis Browns became a part of the National League. They became the Perfectos, then the Cardinals, which they still are today. They've made many postseason appearances and made it to the World Series several times. Between 1926 and 1946, they made nine World Series appearances and won six of them. Before and after, they made many other trips to the postseason. Most notably, the Cardinals became an almost annual postseason contender, making it to the postseason 13 times since 2000. They won the World Series twice since then in 2006 and 2011. After their history of success, they now sit as a question mark in the NL Central with young talent having much to prove. This offseason, they went out and got some guys and didn't really have too active of an offseason to say the least, but hopefully their young talent can step up and capture some wins for the Cardinals. So the Cardinals are a team that is debatably a question mark in the National League. Uh, really, you have a pretty good uh, National League Central division uh, when you look at teams like the Reds who had a really good offseason, and then you look at the Cubs who, you know, they have talent on that roster, uh, whether it's you know, hitting, which to me, you know, they have better hitting than pitching at this point because they lost a lot of guys, but, uh, you know, they're still a threat. And the Cardinals, they lost more than they gained this past offseason in my eyes, so uh, it's kind of tough to say whether or not they're going to be a, a contender this year, but uh, the Cardinals definitely have a lot of young guys coming up, and uh, it's going to be really amazing to see how they turn out. A lot of them are looking good uh, from what we saw in 2019 with uh, different guys like Tyler O'Neill, Lane Adams, you name it. Uh, the Cardinals are uh, really developing players well and it's showing. Talking about one of their young players, he's sort of a utility guy. He plays all over the field, but he had a fantastic 2019. His name is Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond had a great rookie campaign, slashing 304, 350, 500 with 11 home runs and 36 RBIs. And he's a guy that not only can swing it, but he also has speed on the bases with 15 stolen bases last year. Like I mentioned, he is a solid utility player and he can play really good at most positions. And he's only 25 years old, so he does have most of his career ahead of him and hopefully it really does turn out. But the question for Tommy Edmond today is will the rookie season success carry over into 2020 and beyond? So it's interesting because I think a lot of analysts, statisticians, whatever you want to call them, they predict Tommy Edmond to have a worse season than what he might have. I have a lot of confidence in Tommy Edmond. He has a pretty good bat, a pretty quick bat uh, through the zone. He's walked off for the Cardinals in occasion. so. I think he's a valuable piece to the team. Not only can he play multiple positions, but I think he brings a solid bat to the table. And even if uh, the 2019 ball is not seen and we see a different ball in 2020 and he doesn't hit that many home runs, it's fine. You know, as long as he's hitting for solid contact and uh, being that guy, because you know what? If he has speed, then the power becomes something that doesn't need to totally be there all the time. You know, if he can hit it into the gap and then be able to round second, maybe go to third on, you know, a base hit or, uh, well, not a base hit, like a double, then th it's definitely a good sign to uh, have someone like Tommy Edmond on the team that can do that. And he really does serve good for the Cardinals. I think that uh, the kind of piece that they were missing was a utility guy and a quality one at that. And it seems like they have that with Tommy Edmond. So I do predict that he is going to put up a solid performance uh, in 2020 and beyond. And I do feel like he is going to put up similar numbers uh, if indeed the uh, ball or the aerodynamics of said Major League Baseball does not change. Moving on, we are going to look at a player that struggled in 2019 and mostly played third base. He uh, played in the playoffs for the Cardinals in years past and a lot of people look at him as a really good player, and this uh, past season doesn't really represent uh, what type of player he is. His name is Matt Carpenter. So, like I was mentioning, Matt Carpenter had a down year in 2019, slashing only 226, 334, 392, with 15 home runs and 46 RBIs. So, obviously, a down year. But he is a clubhouse veteran. He's a guy that goes in there every day and can teach uh, these young guys how to play the game. 
And, uh, you know, Matt Carpenter has discipline. He knows how to lay all pitches in the zone, and I think that that's very valuable in, in being able to teach uh, these young hitters, especially with all the talent that they do have. He's 34 years old. Uh, he's obviously older, but it's not a bad thing. I mean, you had Matt Carpenter back in 2018 tear it up with the power numbers, one of his best power seasons in his career, so uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's over. But uh, that leads me into the question of the day for Matt Carpenter. Is this the end of the road for Matt? And honestly, I have to say that I do not see Matt Carpenter putting up similar numbers to his 2018 season or even his preceding seasons with, uh, you know, hitting like 270 with, you know, 15 to 20 home runs. I just don't see that for Matt Carpenter. I mean, he is 34 years old and he'll only continue to get older just like everyone else. So um, performance will obviously decline overall. And I do think he can come back and uh, be able to put up numbers where he maybe hits 20, 25 home runs and hits 240 or 250, which is kind of a prototypical power hitter. Maybe a little bit of more power would make him a true power hitter. But Matt Carpenter is a guy that can go in there every day and can contribute to the team in multiple ways, not just on the field, but off the field with his veteran presence. And he really does electrify that clubhouse. He goes out there and he puts uh, the, he puts his performance uh, on high and he makes sure that he turns it up for the dudes on the bench or uh, just anyone watching. So I definitely like Matt Carpenter as a player and I do think he will have a better 2020 season. And coming in third on today's discussion, we're going to talk about a young guy who came up and wowed the crowd in 2019, a guy that uh, really showed people that he has some talent and that he will be able to uh, hopefully hold down that outfield spot over maybe in center field or uh, anywhere in the outfield uh, if they need him to. His name is Lane Thomas. So Lane Thomas not only performed well in the field, he had a tremendous rookie season at the plate. And even though it was a small sample size of 38 at-bats, he slashed 316, 409, 684 with four home runs and 12 RBIs. And like I was mentioning, solid defense. Uh, he plays the outfield, he's 24 years old, and all of these different credentials show that Lane Thomas is a player that not only is young, not only has solid offense, but has solid defense and looks like he could be the total package. But the question today to ask about Lane Thomas is, will the Cardinals allow him to play more in 2020? And so obviously, uh, the Cardinals, just like every other team out there, is going to try and win as many games as they possibly can in 2020 due to the shortened season. Everyone's going to want to put the players out on the line, put the best product on the field to be able to make up for, you know, that uh, lack of a season that they're really going to have. So um, it, it's going to be really hard whether um, or not to decide on Lane Adams and where he should play. But I, I think that the Cardinals should. I think that... Um, they could use him in a pinch hitter role or a defensive substitution role at first and then work him in uh, throughout the season. Uh, the kid can hit. Uh, he could definitely hit. And uh, I'm not sure about uh, his running. I think he's an okay runner, but he has a really solid glove too. And I think he's just going to add wins if you put him in the field. And so I don't see why you don't put Layton Adams out there. I mean, of course, you have guys like Tyler O'Neill, Harrison Bader. So uh, that outfield's definitely young. I know they have Dexter Fowler, but I don't think he's going to be stellar. I mean, he's definitely um, just about an average player, and that's not me knocking Dexter Fowler. That's just me saying that I think Lane Adams has a way higher ceiling than Dexter Fowler does, even though uh, when Fowler was coming up, a lot of people saw a high uh, ceiling for him due to uh, you know his skill set when it came up. But uh, Lane Adams looks really good and he excites me and I know he has to excite some fans uh, over there in St. Louis and uh, in other cities as well. Last on our list comes a veteran pitcher who has been pitching for a very long time. It seems like he's been in the game of baseball for almost 20 years and um, yeah it just it does feel that long and uh, he's a guy that uh, has pitched and pitched again in the postseason. He has tons of experience and I guess you could say that's because he's been in the league so long and uh, from what I believe he's only played for one team and that guy is Adam Wainwright. And so I like Adam Wainwright. I think he's a great pitcher and even though his numbers are not, uh, you know, comparable 
to what they used to be. Uh, he had his best season since 2014, posting uh, a 4.19 ERA over 171 and two-thirds innings pitch with 153 strikeouts and a 1.43 whip. Uh, the concern, obviously, is the opposing batting average. Uh, batters hit 273 off him, which is pretty high, but then again, uh, Wainwright does have a solid defense behind him uh, with Paul DeYoung, uh, Colt Wong, uh, Matt Carpenters, and not like great on defense, but uh, he's not terrible. He's not a liability. So, I mean, he, there's a great defense behind him, and I think that really helps his numbers. But uh, Wainwright is a pitch to contact guy, so you will expect um, maybe a higher opposing batting average. And uh, Wainwright is also 38 years old. He's not going to pump in 96 uh, in the zone. But uh, the question to ask about what Adam Wainwright today is how much longer can Wainwright pitch? And so, Waino is a pitcher that I really like because he has shown he's a guy that will finesse you. He's a guy that snaps off a good breaking ball and he has good breaking stuff. He has good command of his fastball. And so, um, I think that those kind of pitches are really uh, Wayno's bread and butter. Uh, when you look at that curveball, that curveball has to have really high RPMs because when you see that thing, it just goes, and it just, I don't know, there's just something about it that drives me crazy. You know, I mean, you, you look at guys like Yu uh, Darvish that can really uh, throw a nice breaking ball and uh, other pitchers as well, but uh, Wayno does it so well. Uh, he's got a really big frame. I believe he's like six foot seven, six foot eight, or something like that, and he's just a giant on the mound. So, uh, when you get him at that release point, uh, that ball's just coming straight down. And if you're trying to hit it, staying on a straight plane, uh, the probability of you possibly uh, hitting it into the ground can increase, especially um, based off of the point of impact or yeah, the point of impact on the bats. So trying not to deviate from the main question, I think that Wayno will pitch uh, until he's around 40. I think that he still has at least uh, another half to a full season in the tank. I think he's going to go out there this year and he's going to try and prove to the Cardinals that he still has at least another season in him. And you know what? I have to give it to Wayne Wright. He's been pitching for so long in the major leagues that they know that he has that experience. They know that he can go out there and he can throw innings. And uh, it's amazing because he's older now, but he could, he still has that durability. He could still go out there and he could throw eight innings. He could still go out there, throw nine innings. And it, you know, even though hitters might see him a little bit better, maybe uh, they're able to make contact, fail more pitches off to make him throw more pitches. I still think that he's good, you know, just because guys fail a lot of pitches off doesn't mean that they make solid contact, you know, and the 273 uh, opposing batting average uh, does of course speak volumes, but Wayno is still a good pitcher. And you know, you might just say, oh, well, you know, it's because you just like him that you're just advertising Adam Wainwright. But honestly, if he wasn't a good pitcher, then why would he still be in the majors? You know, I mean, same goes for Bart Bartolo Colon. Bartolo Colon's been uh, in the majors for a while, and I know uh, he was trying to get signed by a team. So uh, pitchers like that, they're around the majors because they're good players and teams want those type of players. And honestly, if Wayno wasn't signed to a deal by the Cardinals, he definitely would have been signed by another major league team because, uh, because of his veteran presence and his ability to know how to pitch and what type of pitches to throw a hitter in a certain situation and how he communicates with the catcher. And I think um, another reason why uh, Wayno is able to do it so successfully is because he has Yadier Molina behind the plate. So after Molina leaves, I think that's when Wayno might go as well because uh, when you look at it, those two have been uh, really buddies uh, when it comes to pitching and catching for so long that it's almost hard to see Wayno pitch without uh, Yadier there. So uh, it's really interesting. I think when Yadi goes, then um, Wayno might go and it's going to be painful to see, you know, especially for a guy like me who uh, likes the Cardinals and likes what they're doing with their young guys and uh, being able to keep their older guys that have success. I think uh, that's very important. And it's uh, it's definitely heartbreaking to see that Yachty and Wayno will go, but uh, it's not the end of the world. You're going to have more uh, Waynos, more Yachty's that come up and um, maybe not the same exact players, of course, but uh, definitely going to have some stars and you can't be upset when you have guys like Lane Adams, Tyler O'Neill coming up, Harrison Bader, the speedster, 
So there's a ton of guys that have a bunch of talent and they're going to continue to rake. And they're going to continue to get better. And uh, it's going to be really exciting to see. I'm really excited. And every Cardinals fan out there should be excited too, no matter how they do this upcoming season. I think if you get to see those young guys play and you get to see the experience that they get in the majors, there's no reason to think that they won't get better because it's 100% going to happen. You know, if Lane Adams comes up and in 38 at-bats, he does really well, imagine what he can do in 60 games. And that's if he plays all 60, but, you know, he has the power. He has the contact. Tyler O'Neill, from what I know, has power. He has speed. Harrison Bader, pretty much the same thing. And Bader plays really, really solid defense. So he's definitely going to be in center field for years to come. So uh, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Cardinals. I really do enjoy watching them play. And we can't leave out Paul Goldschmidt and his offensive production year after year. Of course, a lot of people think that he had a down year uh, this last season, uh, I meant to say, but um, really, Goldie's going to go out there and he's going to put up solid numbers, and we all know that, so there's no reason to worry about that, but uh, the Cardinals are definitely a team that I enjoy watching. Uh, if you like this type of content, then make sure to subscribe and leave a like, and uh, comment if you want to see a certain team next, uh, or you know, go onto my Instagram. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, and you can either follow me or comment DM me on there and let me know what team you would like to see next and I would truly appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the feedback guys and you know the fan base is hopefully going to keep on growing so I am very grateful for that um, but overall thank you for everything. Thank you for tuning in to watch this video and uh, this has been Major League Talk with your St. Louis Cardinals.